Right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Munro. I'm the Programme Leader in Film and Media at Queen Margaret University, as well as an Assistant Editor on the Film Education Journal. And I'm here today with Jonathan Charles to talk about an article that we've recently co-authored for the Film Education Journal, and this video is to accompany that. Um, Jonathan is a filmmaker, an animator and a film educator based in East Lothian, and we're just going to explore some of the key aspects that come out of our article. So firstly, Jonathan, I wanted to ask you, you know, the article has a focus on animation. So you've done a lot of work in, in animation, and particularly you look at a case study in a Scottish primary school. And I just wondered if you had any thoughts on why animation particularly works so well with young people in classrooms. Um, it's, yeah, that's interesting because I'm not sure that animation is, sorry, not, not a good start, but in a sense, I'm not sure that animation is necessarily better than live action, funnily enough. I think there's kind of strengths to both types of, um, it, talking about broadly live action and then animation as the two main um, techniques for making film within class. And I think it's to do with the strengths of each um, type of filmmaking. And I suppose uh, the great thing about animation is it's a little bit, it's quite contained. You can sort of get, once you get started, you can, the young people can go off and work by themselves. Other noise can happen in the classroom. So you can have an animation station where three or four young people are working away and the rest of the class can be going about their normal uh, stuff. They'll probably get interested in what's going on in the animation station. Um, I suppose the the thing with animation is there is a tiny little, not tiny, there is a, a stage of getting start, started. You do need to, you know, you need to learn some fundamentals. The young people a teacher needs to have a few fundamentals under their belt before they can create anything. Um, um, don't want to say a value, anything to create anything really. I suppose you need to have you need to have got, got a few fundamentals to actually understand the principles of animation. Whereas I suppose with live action, you can, as many people do, uh, just start the camera rolling and record something, and you'll get something. So, um, so it's kind of. It's kind of two sort of sides of it. There is, and there is a sort of an age, age sort of starting thing. I'm, you know, very, you know, we've worked with nursery age, um, creating animations um, in in nurseries. But at the end of the day, I suppose at truly animation to get it started, you're probably looking at P. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's quite good if it's over. If if you're a teacher and doing it by yourself, it's it's probably slightly easier if you've got P three and up i would say whereas you could possibly do something um even younger with live action you know but a p1s would be you'd, mm -hmm. you'd be able to start something is that part of the dynamic then that yeah live action you can just point record and just start animation takes a bit more time to build up to it but does animation give you more like freedom to represent things in your imagination than you know if you've actually got to film in reality in real locations Yes, I mean, I think that's definitely the, the strength of it is that, I mean, the strength of it is, yes, because it's partly to do with the fact that you don't have to, you, you can make abstract things that, that work quite well. You've got, um, you've got a lot of, what's the word, um, you've got a lot of materials that children understand to do with things like collage and mm. things that they've seen in in picture books and some of those kind of those some of those kind of things whereas sometimes when they try and jump immediately to live action they want to make a they don't want to make a feature film but you know they've kind of you know it's they they're quite whereas i think somehow animation has this other sort of you know brings it back down to basics maybe that's something to do with why it why it works nicely and so you're you can <clears throat> You do, yeah, your your story, your story often, your or your narrative often um, will be able to um, appear more readily because you're mm. be, because you're not faffing around with a load of other components. You've kind of got your image and your your narrative, your your narrative voice separate. You know, I mean, they're all interlinked, but that's that that can help a bit, I think. Yeah, I mean, do you think 
you mentioned collage there and materials. Is there a, a kind of simple beginner's exercise you'd maybe recommend for a teacher in a classroom just to get started straight away with, with animating objects? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's, I mean, we talk about it a little bit in the article, but I suppose I don't talk about how uh, what's the word? passionate I am about, I mean, I'm a stop, I'm a stop motion puppet animator originally that was my kind of training and the commercial work I did in advertising was um, originally um, was that but I suppose I now really confident that the if possible the best thing for um, students to start on when it comes to animation is some kind of cut out animation and it's not it's not just cut out it's 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 the camera's up here um, or ab above the artwork, the artwork's below. And essentially the great thing is uh, gravity works in your favor, whereas with puppets, it doesn't. Um, there's lots of other, there's lots of other advantages <clears throat> in working like that. You can kind of store artwork away from, away from the rostrum, away from your, 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 your station, um, your animation station. So there's lots of little benefits like that for, for cutout. And yeah, I mean, we talk about it a little bit, don't we, in the um, article. I'm not sure if I'm that clear about it in the, uh, in the article, but <clears throat> the essential thing is you're trying to do um, two, two things. I suppose you're trying to keep it really, really simple, uh, but yet use, yet get the students in their first moments, I suppose, to actually create something I don't want to say sophisticated, but to to create something that is that is truly animation. What yeah. happens sometimes, and this is not to, for, for for maybe teachers who've never used animation before. This is not to not to worry anybody because I don't think it's a worry. It's it's there, there is you can kind of when you're animating for a first time, you just sort of move things around randomly, and you know there there is a progression of movement that will create something beautiful something mm. nice um something pleasing when you watch it back <clears throat> so we so we've developed a super simple uh exercise which is essentially kind of for three or four to be gathered around a uh, animation station at once and essentially it's just three colored shapes um on a fixed down background the background must be fixed that's uh, my first tip is fixing things down um and then you kind of give each of your three children the opportunity to move one of those shapes and then and you assign each of those shapes a certain movement so and then so you might say to one child, you're going to move yours really fast. So one position, two positions, three positions, four positions, maybe bouncing off the top, five positions, six positions, seven positions, you know, relatively fast. Whereas somebody else, you might say, right, and you move your triangle slowly, one position, two positions. You know, you're talking kind of millimeters or centimeters, I suppose. Um, for getting, yeah, and then, and then you can then watch that back a number of times and and sort of focus on the uh, green triangle and then on the blue circle. And it means that you're getting a lot back from that very first introduction exercise. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's such a brilliant exercise, I think, for introducing the fundamentals, like, you know, speed and movement and pace and what happens if you move it this way or that way, or, and then everybody to watch back and look at the different effects and, you know, mm. how you might feel something different by one moving really fast or one moving really slow and yeah. the different shapes you might move. I think just those fundamental principles. Yeah. Let's say you've done that in the classroom as a teacher and you want to try and layer it up or level it up into more sophisticated exercises. Are there particular tools and software you might recommend for then developing your, your animation work? Um, I suppose, I mean, there's the, the, there's the next stage, which is obviously that you can do that in front of the class, but you can also then say, to especially if you've got um, a number of tablets, then you can uh, or devices, you can break them up into groups of four or five, and then they go away and have to do the same exercise uh, by themselves or in their mini teams. So that's a great next stage for for the students. Um, 
And I suppose the funny thing is, yeah, because when I thought about this question, I, I think you really, once you've got the fundamentals of animation, you're, you're really built, you know, once you've got that, just the basics of the kind of movement going on, you've really, you know, the, the next stage really is thinking about, okay, how can, how can I maybe turn it into some kind of puppets? How can I, how can I enrich the, I don't want to call it, I keep saying stories, but how can I enrich the narrative? You know, do I, do I create a, a new background? Do I make some more, some, you know, make some more stuff to go in there? Do I encourage my students to um, start on um, writing something that they then might try and animate? yet mm. and i suppose that's the, that's the, that's the that's the thing to do is to keep it really i love it. if you can keep it simple you know and actually think about you know allow abstraction possibly um or poetry maybe or something something very simple when you're creating your animated narrative then that that really helps don't be too ambitious just allow pat you know we patterns are patterns mm. are the are the best thing i suppose actually in sorry i don't know if i've answered that question but i suppose in a way i suppose the tips and things are for, for animation the things that i that i love is is when you uh, when you start teaching students or teachers just about um looping or holds i mean looping's become much more um common because of gif animations or gifs per se uh, <clears throat> but the nice thing in animation is if you can make something that is designed to loop then you can create fantastic stuff with wheels going around dripping taps and and all of those sort of things and then and then the other great one which of course we forget that is brilliant is the hold which in terms of animation is just is just a pause so when nothing happens for a moment and it's uh, it's a very useful very useful trick uh, for animators <clears throat> yeah i think that's great i think that's the the way in which animation allows you to begin with the abstract and then think about how that abstract might lead into a story, as you said, or narrative, and then, you know, kids could go and do some writing and try and layer it com the complexity, but by beginning with that kind of abstract idea of just shapes moving around and what yeah. patterns emerge. And in terms of animation and work on people, you've also worked with young people and teachers. Are there um, particular ways of um, the young people kind of growing with animation that you've measured in terms of maybe confidence or, or skills. We quite often hear that, you know, film education generally um, is such a good way to boost young people's confidence in the classroom. Is that something that you've noticed and how do you kind of measure that? Um, Measuring is really hard. Um, you've, yeah. I've definitely, definitely noticed it. And then the number of anecdotal teachers comments for um, the benefit of film for are all sorts of uh, groups, but I suppose it is, <clears throat> it's funny because I often think about literacy as, as reading, you know, we talk about film literacy and I think about it as reading, whereas of course actually literacy is reading and writing. Um, so, and, and I think the thing is that kids who are struggling with, you're not even struggling. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, let's call it struggling. Uh, people, people who are, are, are not having a good time with, um, Rit uh, traditional literacy, I suppose, um, can sometimes feel empowered, partly because at the, at the reading stage, they, um, they maybe have a better knowledge than some of the, you know, so the, the, the children who don't read books might often have a bigger bank of knowledge about cinema than anybody else in the class, so that they then feel slightly better about themselves because they're able to talk eruditely about that kind of stuff. Um, and then, and then when it comes to making a uh, writing film, I suppose you, again, it's that thing, there's a, there's a load of different roles. So, you know, so you've got that thing that certain, you know, some, some are performers, some are, you know, happier behind the camera. Um, some are, you know, already quite competent artists so they might be really good with artwork but then there might be other ones who are kind of like well, actually i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit rubbish at kind of like collage stuff or or painting normally but hang on a minute there's this there's this kind of timing element and there's this kind of excite excitement that can happen when you 
animate that um that or when, when you film make but when you animate that is just yeah for me it's funny when i did when i did fight so <laughs> saying this is kind of totally uh crazy story but i think it was there was a moment when i was at art school just at foundation and i thought i was going to go off and do um interior design so i was kind of product designing sort of interior design and there was a film project kind of within fine art um section and the and the and the teacher and the fine art lecturer who was brilliant just came over and he was just kind of like because i started making stuff and i started you know and so for me it was one of those it's that same kind of thing i had that um experience of not necessarily excelling at being able to draw a still life or do certain things but the the movement and the timing and the sound go everything going together was very exciting and there's there's certain there's a certain bunch of young people that will that really click into that um and yeah and i think for everybody else there's a there's a there's a fashion as well to it as well people people are interested in media so any, so most kids get have a little hook in I think so and I think something that they can maybe take home and try out themselves without like you said they need to find other actors or other situations you know if, if they feel inspired by something in the classroom or a mum and dad's phone or they might have their own phone depending on their age and you know just this kind of software that, that you've recommended and we'll put the links to that on the website just start with a bit of stop motion animation and just that creativity mm -hmm. uh you know just just from your own back I guess um yeah definitely. Well, great. thanks very much for your for your time jonathan um no, it's good. as i said we'll put some of the links up on the the website and i wondered we could maybe try and track down an example um of this kind of movement this basic movement animation that you've made and maybe include a little video or something on the website so, yeah that's i think that I'm, I'm sure and if not i could um just post something that's been that you know that somebody's done i should i i've probably got endless yeah. uh um, tests exactly. and stuff that, yeah that we've created yeah i think so that is the other to see that illustrated along with your description of it yeah that's it yeah you could put that stick that yeah. on the end of this or have it as a link the um i mean that is the other great thing of course about animation is that there's you don't have that permissions or there's less permissions thing because yeah. children's faces are not in so that's a you just reminded me of that when thinking about those clips can i use them yeah mostly there's no voice there's just little bits of um animation testing yeah. going on so I have that Brilliant. Absolutely. And I think for teachers watching this, that's always one hurdle to be able to overcome easily, you know, permissions and consent and things like that. Yes. Um, well, great. Thank you very much for your time, Jonathan. Thank you. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, listening to us. And please check out the related links on the website. Brilliant.